Hey you guys, welcome to the Millionaire House's 12 Days of Christmas. Come on in. This year, I'm hosting 12 days of action-packed content to help you get ready for the holidays. Please stay tuned until the end of the video because I've got some exciting giveaway information for you back there. Today's episode is part one of how I decorated this tree. She really is a beast. I call her the great ornament eater. I hope you walk away with some great tips. Hi guys and welcome to the Millionaire House's 12 Days of Christmas. So this is my favorite time of year and I thought it'd be a great idea to put together 12 days of tips, tricks, and hacks to help you with your holiday styling this year. So I really hope you enjoy it. Okay, so what better way to get things started than to talk about our Christmas trees, right? So over the next two days, I will give you some designer tips and tricks that you may already know, but maybe not. So today we'll talk about the tree topper, we'll talk about garland, and we'll talk about anchor ornaments. And then tomorrow we will finish up with styling your tree with ornaments. This is the tree topper that I designed this year. Um, I wanted something custom and beautiful. If you'd like a video on how I did this, it was really easy. Let me know in the comments below and I can easily put one together for you. Um, but I am going to go ahead and get started with the tree. So really quick and then I promise we can get started. I almost forgot to tell you the most important part, which is the theme of the tree this year. So for the first time ever i'm removing red from the tree and i'm kind of nervous and excited about it all at the same time but if you're team red don't worry i've got you covered in another video later on in this series but the inspiration for this tree came from our backyard we have an amazing um, backyard it's a nature preserve and we experience all sorts of incredible wildlife back there deer and turkey alligators and all sorts of things and so I figured why not bring the outside elements in with a rustic glam theme but with an emphasis on the glam so I'm using warm colors and warm metals and champagnes and golds and ivories and I'm really excited to see how it turns out so we've been using artificial trees ever since our children were born and they were all allergic to the real tree. And the most important step if you are using an artificial tree is to make sure you take the time to fluff your tree. Every single branch needs to be touched and the lights need to be distributed evenly. Our tree is a pre-lit 12 foot Highland Fraser with 1500 lights. Although this tree is no longer in production, I've put a link in the description box below to a very similar product from the King of Christmas. With our custom tree topper this year, we're at over a whopping 13 and a half feet. My second tip today, especially when you're dealing with the mega tree, is to actually start with your tree topper first. I had to learn this the hard way back when it was amateur hour years ago and I'd knock over all of my ornaments because I was putting the tree topper on last. You'll definitely save yourself a lot of time, heartache, and money by starting at the top and working your way down. When I started designing this year's tree, I had a vision of the monogrammed initials sitting on a cloud of bows. I wanted lots of little sparkly bows at the top of the tree, so I'm going to show you how I made these. This year I'm using a really beautiful 4 inch champagne sparkle ribbon and about a 2.5 inch ivory ribbon. I took both pieces and measured out about 17 inches, layered them on top of each other, just like this. Next, I folded the ribbon in half, and then I folded it backwards on each half on both sides. Next, I clamp the base of the bow together like so. And I secured it with 22 gauge uh, floral wire 
very, very tightly and left myself kind of a stem because I'm going to use that part to stick the bow into the tree. Then I simply fluffed out each side like so and they were ready to go. So that was a lot of work getting that tree topper done, but I think it turned out beautifully and hopefully you agree. So once you're done with your tree topper, next you'll want to move on to your garland. So there are lots of different methods on how to apply your garland. Some people like to wrap around the tree. Some people like to do a cascade. I did that last year, but to achieve that designer look, a lot of times um, you'll see like a scattered pattern, which is what I'm going to do this year. I'm changing out the colors this year. And so since we're doing this rustic glam theme, I thought I would try to add the grapevine. I've never used it before, but I've already started applying it to the tree and I think it looks great. I ordered this gorgeous ribbon from Balsam Hill and it took about five rolls to decorate our tree. For dramatic effect, I like to use between two and four different types of ribbon in the tree when I'm decorating. This year I stuck with two, the ivory ribbon I got from Michaels. Layer your ribbon and start adding it from the top of the tree and work your way down. Instead of using the whole roll, I usually cut about two and a half to three foot pieces and use those one at a time. It's just a lot easier to work with. I start from deep within the tree, come out and go deep within the tree again. And here's another tip you may not know. You can actually use the tips of the tree to wrap and tuck the ribbon in. Um, but sometimes I use the 22 gauge wire as well. It just depends on where the tip of the tree is located. Okay, so it's actually tomorrow for me. Um, I had a change and we we're trying to shoot this as weather permits so that's why I have different clothes on now but same video for you. So we've talked about the ribbon and once you're done getting your ribbon or garland um, loaded onto your tree it's time to load your ornaments and so the one tip that I want to mention in this ornament section is don't be afraid to think outside of the box when it comes to loading your ornaments. Today I'm loading my anchor ornaments and then in the video tomorrow I'll show you how to load the rest of the ornaments. So an anchor ornament is like your big pieces. These are the things that you can really get creative with. Um, think outside of the box, your non-traditional items. It can be signs, it could be letters. In this case today, I'm actually gonna load lanterns or they look kind of like bird cages, kind of like lanterns. But when I think about going into the woods, what do you need? Well, you need light. And I thought this would be a great way to keep the tree animated because I'm gonna put the battery operated flicker candles inside. So let's get started. I ordered these lanterns from walmart.com. They're about three feet tall and they were perfect because they didn't have any glass in them. And I can definitely use them and other parts of the house at different times of the year. Next, to fill them in a little bit, I found these really cute rustic and kind of glam picks at Hobby Lobby. So I picked up a few of those and filled them in the bottom of the lantern.
Not only did these picks add a nice warm and rustic feel, it will definitely help the lantern not look so empty once it goes into the tree. Next, I secured the lanterns into the tree with some hobby sticks. And if you guys would like to know more information on proper placement for the anchor ornaments, let me know in the comments below and we can certainly do a live on Instagram. I can show you how to do that. The biggest tip I can give in this area though is to order them in odd numbers. It's a little bit easier to style that way. And here's a quick look with the nighttime glow for you. You can see I added the flameless candles in there and it really, really is a nice touch to the tree. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow for part two of decorating the tree. It's all about ornaments. This year, as a thank you to my followers and subscribers, I'm giving away a few of my favorite things in the Millionaire House's 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. Avon Chef Parisian Cocktail Set, two Pier 1 Martini glasses, and my personal favorite, the Venturi Red Wine Aerator. Entering is easy. First, follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then, make sure you leave a comment each day on the 12 days of Christmas. If you'd like an extra entry, check out my Insta stories every morning, and then when you go over to YouTube to watch the video, answer the clue that I leave in my Insta stories over on YouTube. It's that simple. Everyone here at the Millionaire House would like to thank you for a great year. We wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.